that the questions are not too difficult for me. <laughs> Good afternoon and happy Easter Monday. I'm Amanda Rapine from Seton High School and this is Louis Langen from Elder High School. Today we are here with His Eminence, Cardinal Versaldi. Thank you, Cardinal, for being here with us today. Thank you to you for the possibility to talk with you, to meet you, and to have also an experience of this important part of the church in the States. Let's start off with a lighthearted question. So my typical Easter starts off with me waking up and then looking for my Easter basket, then going to Mass with my family, and then celebrating Easter with the rest of my family. What does your typical Easter look like as a cardinal? My experience? Your typical Easter, like what does it look like as a cardinal? But, uh, as a cardinal in Rome, we are in the service of the Pope, so we participated uh, for a very solemn uh, celebration in the St. Peter's Church, as I did uh, until few hours before leaving Rome last uh, uh, Saturday night uh, with the Pope who uh, celebrated at, and during the uh, Easter uh, um, vig vigil, you know, he baptized eight young people and uh, it was a very uh, heartful uh, uh, celebration and uh, we participate and we try to stay with the people because the, the St. Peter uh, Church was full of people and it was very uh, deep spiritual experience even though uh, we, uh, we don't have uh, a particular church as a cardinal in the Curia, we are very happy to serve Pope Francis in his mission. Thank you. Uh, well now a question about Catholic education. Uh, so around this time last year, the Congregation for, Edu for Catholic Education uh, published a document called Educating to Humanism to Build a Civilization of Love 50 Years After the Populorum Progressio. In this document, the Church urged the need for humanizing education in the face of a rapidly changing and increasingly globalized world. So what does that mean to humanize education and what will that look like going forward? Yes, uh, the Popolorum Progression was a very prophetic document uh, uh, written by Pope uh, Paul VI uh, and uh, it was prophetic because I think one of the first was uh, uh, able to see th that uh, the uh, human people are a family. The ph phenomenon now called globalization in the Polorum Progression is uh, already present and he invited all the people to find the common basis for the real integral progress of the humankind. So it was very, very prophetic in, in this world, very uh, uh, important and uh, actual his, uh, his message. With our document, we try not only to commemorate this important document, but also to adapt it uh, to the new circumstances according to the teaching of the Pope uh, Francis, who is so insisting in asking the Church to uh, observe the fundamental uh, method of this mission, no? to, uh, not to preserve itself, but to be at the service of, of all mankind and giving uh, to all peoples a message of hope through the dialogue, to the tolerance, but also uh, giving the invitation for the search of the truth, not just to follow the uh, desires of each individual, but uh, to uh, have a common anthropological basis in order to answer to the most important question of a human heart, which is common not only for the Catholic people, but for all human persons. So in this way, uh, uh, to uh, re reconsider an anthropological, humanistic basis for a common uh, 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 
step in, in order to uh, promote the peace in the world is an, a very uh, important task, uh, not only for the church, but also for all the people of goodwill. So uh, with this new um, uh, global message for hope and, and, and this new way of trying to spread uh, the Christian mes message, uh, what challenges does the U.S. face in particular? And um, how, how can uh, we start to, to reconcile that, that issue of um, faith with reason? Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, this uh, uh, renewal demands, request uh, a change uh, from both parts, from the people uh, having faith and also for the people not having faith because as you know in the past there is uh, historical obstacles between the dialogue between faith and reason which at the beginning of a Christian uh, uh, history was easier than now. It was uh, 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 there were mistakes from both parts and uh, now it's uh, very uh, important to admit the reciprocal mistakes in order to renew the attempt to reconcile the faith of the reason but this is possible if both parts are able to install to to build uh, a true dialogue which means uh, uh, the capacity, first of all, to listen to the other people, you know, to understand uh, to the other people, to see what in the other ideas, together with some mistakes, there are also some truth, in order to uh, create a new climate of trust. And in this way, the Church has to give first, uh, the first uh, example. And I think uh, the last uh, popes were very insisting on this uh, uh, task you know, to rebuild a, a, a advantageous dialogue between faith and reason. Fides et Ratio, the, the document of uh, John Paul II is very important, but also Benedict uh, XVI and also Francis. Pope Francis is very insisting on this capacity to listen, to understand, and also to propose without imposing any uh, elements of truth uh, according to the principle of reciprocal tolerance. Because what is important is not immediate results of the dialogue, but the capacity to stay together in order to progress together. And instead of uh, going one against another, uh, the two parts have to uh, be closer in order to give the same direction towards the truth, which for us is God, source of the truth. Well, thank you. Nowadays, people are tending to identify as spiritual rather than religious, meaning they still want a relationship with God, but they don't want to commit to a certain sect of the church. What is the church's response to this? Yeah, it's very important, uh, this question, because uh, I participate in some way as a congregation for Catholic education uh, to the preparation of the uh, next synod. Uh, uh, about the young people, as you know, no? and in the preparation, I, I can see this risk no? that uh, uh, also, uh, from, uh, on behalf of the church, uh, the message seems to give more importance to the church than to the God. So, uh, I mean, certainly the church is made by human. Uh, beings which have good and, <laughs> and bad attitudes and historically this is very evident and also nowadays is very, is very um, clear even though we have, must consider that uh, the scandals uh, 
make more rumors than the good examples. <laughs> so a majority of the priests of, of the Christian uh, communities are doing well, but it's enough that one or two of the priests uh, or uh, Christian communities make a mistake that this is, seems that all the church is bad. No? But we admit the mistakes, uh, but what is important for the church is to accompany the young people to meet with Christ, not with the church. Because uh, uh, we have to be clear to the young people, we are not so worthy uh, uh, to uh, give the best uh, example of the LDLs we preach. And if the church us just to preach what is able to practice, this is the end of the mission of the church. Because the message we have received is always more, uh, is always superior to the possibilities we have to practice it. Because as a priest, when I was parish priest and then when I was bishop in the diocese, I always say, not look at me or to my church. I, I, am, I am just an indicator. If you fix your eyes on the uh, indicator and you lose the possibility to see the object of what I indicate. So admitting that we are uh, not always coherent, but what is important is to be able to give a authentic message, authentic uh, 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 image of Christ. Because if the church is able, as the Pope Francis always insists, uh, to give a, a, a real image of, of Christ, so the, the young people, the, the people in general, ends to look at the church and, and is attracted to, to Christ and is able to be humble to participate also to the uh, uh, Christian people made by uh, sinners also, but nobody can, uh, must expect to be perfect in order to uh, uh, enter into the church. And in this way, uh, my invitation also for the uh, uh, students in the Catholic schools is to fix the eyes in Christ and giving a real authentic message of what Christ is and what he made for us, because he uh, uh, went to the cross, not the church. All right. Well, Cardinal, thank you very much. I think that's a great ending point. Um, thank you very much for being with us. Well, thank you to you having given me this possibility. And my best wishes for your future. Thank you.